Hello and welcome all. I welcome you to this digital lesson of Maulana Azad National Urdu University. I am Dr. Mudassir Ahmed Ghori. Today, I'll be taking up English communication skills. This course consists of four blocks and each block consists of four units. Unit 13, sentence structure. Unit 14, paragraph writing. Unit 15, letter writing. And unit 16, email, SMS and invitation writing. Today, We'll be talking about Unit 13, Sentence Structure. We will discuss the following things. We will discuss what a sentence is. We will discuss what is meant by sentence construction. We will also talk about the kinds of sentences. We will say and discuss the different effective ways to write effective sentences. And we will also try to understand what is sentence coherence. Before we discuss that, it is important to understand what a sentence is. A sentence is an arrangement of words that provides proper meaning. You should always remember that a verb is the most significant element of a sentence. The reverse, every sentence starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop, which is also known as period. The same sentence may end up with a note of interrogation or note of an exclamation. Sometimes, a single word can provide complete sense and become a sentence. For example, the word come, or the word go, or yes, or for that matter, the word no. These are examples of the sentence that are a single word, but complete sense and sentence they stand for. Now, I will give some examples of a sentence. For example, he is a cricketer. This sentence ends with a full stop. What is your name? This sentence will end up with a note of interrogation. I am extremely sorry for your loss. This sentence ends with a note of exclamation. Let us also discuss about clause. A clause is a group of words that has both a subject and a verb. Every complete sentence is made up of at least one clause. For example, Michael bought a computer. There we have one sentence with one clause and expressing one idea. You should remember that there are two different clauses. Principal clause, which is also called as independent clause or main clause or subordinate clause, sometimes also called as dependent clause. An independent clause is a simple sentence. It can stand on its own. For example, she is hungry. I am feeling well today. On the other hand, dependent clause is a simple sentence which cannot stand on its own. For example, although she is hungry, whoever is hungry. Here, you should notice that it requires another clause to complete its sense. Dear students, let us also talk about phrases. Phrase is a group of words with a subject verb component used as a single part of a speech. For example, I would say, he is my best friend. Best friend here acts as a phrase. You should remember that to frame a sentence, a logical connection of words and a proper pattern is always followed. Therefore, a simple sentence is constructed by applying some of the structures that I am going to discuss. It can be subject is always followed by a verb, as in case she writes, here, she stands for a subject and writes stands for a verb. Or, he sings. He stands for a subject and sings stands for a verb. The other structure could possibly be that the subject is followed by a verb and an object. Now, let's take the example. Iqbal sent a letter. Iqbal is a subject. Sent is a verb and letter is an object. I will give you another example. The boy kicked the ball. Again, the boy stands here as a subject, kicked, verb, and football as an object. The other structure that can possibly be in the sentence is a subject is succeeded by a verb and an adjective. For example, Rohit runs fast. Rohit here is a subject, runs is a verb, 
and fast is an adjective. In a similar way, manju is beautiful. Manju is subject, is stands for a verb, and beautiful stands as an adjective. There is also a possibility that a subject is succeeded by a verb and a double object. Now, look at the example. The black boy gave me a pen. The black boy stands as a subject, gave, here indicates the verb, me serves as an object, object one, and a pen serves as the object two. So you should understand there is also a possibility that we may have a sentence where we have more than one object. Dear students, a sentence can also be made by having subject plus verb in case of intransitive verbs or sentences. These intransitive verbs or sentences are the sentences which do not require an object to complete their meaning. For example, she laughs, dogs bark, and many other like these. In a similar way, a sentence can also be made up of subject, verb, and object, as in case of transitive verbs. For example, he plays guitar, he plays cricket, I wrote a letter. All these sentences contain an object to complete their meaning. The other structure of sentence could possibly be subject plus predicate. As we know, subject is someone who performs the action and whatever we say about the subject stands as predicate. Look at the example. Rashid wrote a letter. Rashid is the agent or the doer of an action here and wrote a letter is something that is said about the subject. So this part will be considered as predicate. Let us also understand that a sentence can be framed by NP and VP. I'm sure this might be a bit difficult to understand at this stage, but let us try to brief it. NP stands for noun phrase and VP stands for verb phrase. Now let's take the example, the cat sat on the mat. The cat here serves as the noun phrase, while sat on the mat part of this sentence exists as a verb phrase. Dear students, the structure of the sentence is very simple. You will have simple sentences, compound sentences, or complex sentences. Let's try to understand what these three type of sentences are. A simple sentence is a sentence that is framed only by one independent class, and it always conveys only one idea. For example, Jason's father likes cars. Here, we have only one class and one idea. While in case of compound sentences, that is constructed by connecting two or more than two independent class. There is no subordinate class used in compound sentences. Now I'll repeat that example. Jason's father likes cars and he works in a garage. Such type of sentences are linked together by coordinating conjunctions. Conjunctions like for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Another way of remembering these uh, conjunctions can possibly as an acronym of fanboys, where F stands for for, A stands for and, N stands for nor, B stands for but, O stands for or, Y stands for yet, and S stands for so. Let's also understand what is a complex sentence. A complex sentence consists of at least one independent class and one more dependent class, unlike compound sentences. Now let us take the example, Jason's father who works in a garage likes cars. We shall also discuss now the kinds of sentences. Dear viewers, I must tell you, there are many types of sentences. For now, we'll brief about some basic type of sentences. One, declarative sentences, interrogative sentences, imperative sentences, exclamatory sentences, and optative sentences. Remember, a declarative sentence is a sentence that makes a statement or asserts something in a declarative manner. It is also known as assertive sentence. It always ends with a full stop. For example, I am going to school. In case of interrogative sentences, a sentence that asks a question is entitled an interrogative sentence. This type of sentence either begins with a helping verb or simply with WH and always ends with a note of interrogation. For example, why are you crying? What is your name? Why were you late? 
so on and so forth. Let us talk about imperative sentences now. They reverse a sentence that conveys request, order, suggestion and instruction is termed as imperative sentence. Now look at the example. Please send me the Urdu notes tomorrow. Here in this sentence you are offering or you are providing a request. Get out of my class. This sentence expresses order. You shouldn't drink alcohol. It is injurious to health. This expresses the advice or the suggestion. Let us also talk about optative sentences. It is a kind of an exclamatory sentence. It portrays a wish or a desire. When very often when you speak to your friends and say, I wish you a jubilant journey. May Almighty Allah bless you all. May you live long. Such type of examples are optative sentences. The last, exclamatory sentences. A sentence that expresses or conveys a certain feeling, whether the feeling is of joy, surprise, sorrow, anger, hatred, or anything else. An exclamation mark is always used in such kind of sentences. For example, hurrah, he hit three sixes continuously. Let's quickly recapitulate what is the takeaway from today's lesson. Today, we discussed about sentence. We discussed about the structure of the sentence, sentence construction, types of sentence, and sentence coherence. Dear viewers, thank you for joining us. We will be meeting you soon in another session with another unit titled Paragraph Writing.